Andrew Kinsman, artist and saxophonist. Uh, you're talented in, in two different areas, obviously both as a painter and also as a saxophone player. When did you realise that you were good at, at both of those things? The music I didn't take up till I was uh, about 25 actually. I didn't do music at school. I always did the art, um, but that was kind of off my own back. I started painting in oils um, when I was 10, 10 or 11 which is quite early to paint in oils, I suppose. Mm. Um, and I just carried on painting. I sold some work to friends kind of soon after that. What, like when you were a teenager? Or? Yeah, yeah, kind of 12, 13. I was selling work to my mum's friends. And um, and not in a kind of, oh, isn't that cute, but slightly rubbish kind of way. It was actually it was actually quite good. They were quite good, I thought, yeah. yeah. Well, they were, they were, you know, still life landscapes. I wasn't really doing portraits. They weren't mm. commissioned portraits at all. But they were things that people could have in their homes, I suppose. Classic horses' heads, um, landscapes, that mm. sort of thing. Uh, and then I, well, moving forward, uh, when I was about 25, I took up the saxophone properly. I actually got a saxophone when I was about 20, mm. never played it, and uh, sold it for a month's rent, <laughs> regretted it, and then bought another one. Um, I started seriously playing about 25, doing odd jobs then, still doing the painting for a bit, and then I just realised that I couldn't do both, so I gave up the painting for about seven or eight years. Oh, okay. When I was gigging, and then I took up the painting again, um, kind of in my early 30s, I suppose, and started going in for competitions, doing portraiture then because um, I was always interested in the, the figurative side of, side of painting and um, started going into competitions, doing well and I've been doing it ever since. And you've developed this, um, well, what I see is quite a photographic style of painting. Would yeah. you say that's a fair description of it and is that the style you've always had? It's representational, it's, some of it's quite photorealistic, yeah. And I suppose other people would call it hyperrealism. Some of the work I have done is hyperrealism. It's very detailed, and I've done it very glossy almost, I suppose. And it, it does look like a photograph, especially when it's condensed down in a photograph form when people see it um, as a postcard or something, mm. or in my portfolio. Um, when you actually see the painting, it's it's not quite as photographic, I suppose. Really, I don't I don't really want to make it so so finished that it doesn't look like a painting that you can't see the paint. Um, but I'm trying to I'm trying to loosen up a bit because mm. I think as far as hyperrealism goes you know there's only so far you can go with that mm. it looks like a photograph that's all you can say about it it's amazing it's skillful um, but I'm looking at other artists now other contemporary artists that uh, that, have, that aren't so photographed they're still representational but their work is far more interesting to me now I think right mm. and so with the with the music, you said that you kind of you you moved on to that. Was that because you kind of just gave up on the painting for a bit, or you just thought that's the route I want to go on? Or uh, I can't really remember now when I was. I, I remember it was it was a uh, a moment. I think it was on my twenty fifth birthday. Actually, my mum bought me a sax again. I think she felt sorry for me because the fact that I sold my other one, hmm. and I th I just thought I want to be a saxophone player, um, and so I just practiced as much as I could and I thought I haven't got time to do the painting and I actually kind of lost interest in the painting I think I always took it for granted mm. I thought I want to be a musician now rather than an artist so I suppose my creative side kind of just shifted and were there key influences that you had when you you, you, you say you wanted to be a saxophonist was that because you were hearing certain people and you thought I'd love to be able to do that yeah I just loved the sound of the saxophone um, and it was such an, an, an expression uh, kind, of, kind of instrument that you know you could it was like a voice mm. so that's what other saxophone uh, players say and I agree with them really yeah um, yeah it's it's something representational every saxophone player sounds different because like a singer sounds different you know it's the uh, the the throat you're on for sure the way you play the way you improvise obviously um, and I just love jazz, I love the improvising side of it, how you could make one tune sound so different mm. 
Um, but that's not yeah. an easy thing to do, though, is it? That's that to set your sights on thinking I, I want to be able to play around with the music that much. It's yeah, quite hard. It is. Yeah, it's, it's a minefield and it's a never-ending process, I suppose. And I, I'm nowhere near uh, what I would consider to be a great improvising saxophonist, to be honest. When I hear other sax players on YouTube, mm. I'm blown away all the time, and I just and I think you know I'm I'm, I'm just scratching the surface, really. But I suppose really I try to sound as melod melodic as I can when I improvise. And is that is that lack of um, lack of practice or lack of talent, or have some people just got the ability to be able to? Complete lack of practice, really. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I mean I, I practiced really hard when I first started mm. playing the sax at 25 um, for a good sort of three or four years. Got to doing gigs. I suppose I became a bit disillusioned with gigs, thinking no one's really listening, mm. you know. So how good do I have to be to do to do this, you know, to perform? Mm. The kind of people you're impressing, really. I suppose are the other musicians you play with, they're the ones that notice if you're good, and then therefore you get the gigs. I suppose. But um, and then I think I kind of when I took up the painting again, the the desire to be you know, the best sax player I could be kind of shifted a little bit. Yeah. So I, then I started the, the um, you know, exhibiting works. I started missing the, the playing a bit more. I've always just tried to juggle the two really. Mm. And I think, I think now for the last kind of couple of years, I've really tried to be focused on both. And now I'm trying to actually make one work with the other. Mm. But it's more, I suppose, Music is a lot more social than, than painting. Yeah, it is completely. And there's got to be an advantage, for example, um, I don't know if it's true, but they say that uh, saxophone players always get the girls. Is that, uh, <laughs> is that a fair comment? You always say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 girls like the sound of the, the saxophone. They think it's sexy and, mm. and it's quite phallic, I suppose, really. Um, maybe it's the same as guitarists, I don't know. Maybe that's why I took it up, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know, but it is very sociable, yeah. Yeah. And this, and the, the contrast of painting is, I suppose, really the, the practicing is 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 um is like the painting. Hmm. It's uh, you're just stuck in your room for hours, just you know, um, just working at something, just trying to improve. I suppose the difference with the painting is the fact that you actually have. Uh, the results in front of you as you're painting, you can mm. see it developing. That's what I love, and that's what I that's what I missed when I was doing the music. Mm. I missed creating actually something because with the music, I'm not actually creating my own music. I'm playing other people's music. Yeah, and you can I suppose once you finish playing it, you can kind of remember whether it was good, but you can't really yeah look back at you can't it, be sure. it in the same way. Exactly, obviously unless you record the gigs. Yeah, which I've been doing, um, and which is a real eye opener because I realise. You know, I've just got to go back to the beginning and, <laughs> and just get the basics. So right. there's, there's continuous improvement there, you never... Always, yeah. And I'm always trying to work on my tone and my timing. That's the two most important things. Yeah. And I always go back to that. Yeah. Right, I've got a few um, quick-fire questions for you. Tate Modern or National Gallery? National Gallery. Audrey Hepburn or Grace Kelly? Audrey Hepburn, mm. definitely. Stan Getz or John Coltrane? Ah, uh, Stan Getz. Initially, obviously, so many sax players that I'm listening to now have all learned from John Coltrane. Okay. Uh, I love them both. I couldn't decide. Uh, Latin or funk? Um, funk, I suppose. Uh, Bristol or London? Uh, uh, Bristol. Hmm. Yeah. And finally, it's a bit of a desert island question, but um, if you could take your all your painting stuff to a desert island. Or your saxophone, which one would you take? My painting stuff. Interesting. It would be hard to choose, <laughs> but yeah, I think my painting stuff. Okay. Yeah. Andy Kinsman, thanks very much. <laughs>